and we were trying to get ourselves out of that stage for 49 days, seven weeks. Being that those 49 days we prepare to make ourselves a filling, fitting bride for Hashem, he's the chasen, we are the kala. So therefore, sota is to get rid of any issues that might disturb the marriage. Marriage down here, which correlates to the marriage between Hashem and the Jewish people. There's also another parallel, but I won't, I'll, I'll leave that out. The second msechta, which is also part of your copies, is from Tractate Moed Katan. You'll see a few pages further. You'll see two Hebrew pages, or Aramaic, I should say. Yeah, I Thank you. So the first page is, Hebrew, is Aramaic. It's the original in Sota. Then you have the English. Oh, okay. Then you have the English, one page. Then you have, again, the Aramaic, but it's a different tractate. Called Moed Cotton. Anyone know what Moed Cotton means? Cotton is small, Moed is. Holiday. So, what do you think that talks about? Small holiday. Cotton Moed. Right? Right. Yes. But also, it also, it also discusses the laws of mourning, of Elus, which is also called a Moed in the future to be. Right now, it's Cotton. We don't see it. It's like a little child who hasn't yet developed. But all these sad days will develop into happy days in the future. So it's also, in a way, a moed katan. So it has two subjects. The subject of chalamoid, what you may do, what you may not do in chalamoid, and also uh, avelus. The issue is whether one is allowed to get married during chalamoid. We'll discuss that. But before we get to that, we'll, we'll discuss that in a minute. Before we get to that, let's see what the Gemara has to say in Tractate Sota. All yours? Oh, you have one? Okay, good. What's your name? Alexandra. From? Long Island. Okay. I know what that is. Same name. Same name? Same last name or first name? No, first name is. Alexandra, okay. (laughs) What's the name? Uh, Okay. It's a Gemara class, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> you were wondering. Sometimes I also wonder what am I, what am I, what am I doing here? Okay, anyways. Um, okay, so the first page is the original. See, original. This is what the Gemara looks like. Right. You have Rashi on one side, on the, on the, and the Tosos on the other, with Rashi's grandchildren and others on the other side of the page. Okay, in the middle, of course, we have the Mishnah. Which is the uh, sages on the Tanoim, and then you have like, where it says Gimel Mem, around ten lines from the top. You'll see a Gimel Mem that means Gemara. That starts the clarification of the Amiroyim on the Mishnah. Anyways, we're not going to learn the Mishnah, but we're going to start. Look at the next page and the underlined words on the right side of the top part of the page, towards the bottom part of the right side. We'll see, not the notes. I mean, the notes are on the bottom. I'm talking about the top side, but the right side. The Gemara cites one Amora, homiletical introduction to the topic of Sota. It was an, before he gave a shear on the laws of Sota, the laws of marriage, uh, what happens to a woman if she you know, hit out, hit, was hiding with somebody, and then we don't know what she did, all these laws. Before he started these laws, he decided, let me open up on a topic that's about relations about Shiduchim. It says the following. Omar of Shmuel Bar Yitzchak. Shmuel is his name, the son of Rabbi Yitzchak, stated, Ki have a Pasach, Reish Lakish Bisote, where the famous sage, Reish Lakish, who was a Baltruva, by the way, would open his lecture on the biblical passage of Sote. Omar Hachi, he said the following. He said thus, Ain Mizabgin, like, could be that some of these quotes you might have heard yourself. They're pretty well known. So you might have heard this. Might not sound too new. The heavenly court, which obviously means God himself, Mizabgin, Zabgin, who knows Zivug, Zug, or your Hebrew. How do you say a pair? A Zug is a pair. Zivug means having men and women having intimacy. Mizabgin, we don't pair together. 
אין מזבגים לו לאדם אישה, ואמרנו היי, a woman is not provided for a man unless they fit, unless they are in accordance with each other's deeds. In other words, what that means is, look at Rashi, uh, the bottom of the page you'll see a, a translation of Rashi. So Rashi says, what does it mean, a modest woman is paired with a righteous man and an immodest woman with a wicked man. What do you see quite interestingly as he says, modest, righteous, immodest, how about saying wicked, righteous, wicked, why is the, by the woman it says modest, and by the man it says righteous, immodest, wicked, modest, righteous. For stylic, stylistic consistency, Rasha should have stated a righteous woman with a righteous man, or a wicked woman with a wicked man. Why did Rafi choose the modesty? Apparently, Rafi is intimating that Sneus is the cornerstone of a woman's spiritual stature, that which is essential to her righteousness. Accordingly, Sneus must mean more than mere modesty in dress, especially since men also should adopt that characteristic. So it's not just for women. What we mean here, it, Sneus means more than just how you dress. It means modesty in the terms of not flaunting yourself, being a public figure. In as much as it means, it derives from the word the same root as masnia, which means to hide, to suppress. Don't get the wrong idea. Well, you'll soon see what it, I'll read it and you'll, I'll explain. Perhaps Rashi means to suggest that it is preferable for a woman to suppress her ability to initiate and operate in the public arena. Doesn't sound too good. To the next page. It needs clarification. After all, this is not a authentic source, just the art scroll themselves saying this. And commit herself instead to the home for her family's benefit, as the verse states, called Kavuda Bas Melech Penimon, him, all the glory of the princess is in her dwelling within. A woman can't, you know, uh, achieves much more from within than she does from without. Uh, a woman's role is not to necessarily go to shul. She could, of course, no problem. It's a good thing to go once in a while, maybe even every Shabbos, uh, Yontif, Shabbos. But a woman's main occupation should be, as a married woman, that is, mainly for her children, to make sure her children grow up properly. And a mother is, has a play, very, plays a very important role in that aspect. When he says here, I don't think his words are very easy to accept. He says here, that a uh, woman should not su su suppress herself. It's not a good word. Yeah, it's very misnagish. It doesn't mean suppress herself, like, you know, hold herself back and torture herself of not going out. It means when she does go out, she shouldn't, you know, raise attention. Doesn't mean that we want to her not to raise attention because it might affect the men. But people make a mistake and think, I don't want to get into the su subject of modesty, but People make a mistake and think that women have to dress properly so men shouldn't sin. That is a terrible mistake. It's not for men's sake. It's not right to say women are here to serve men. So because men might look in the wrong place, therefore we have to be careful. That's wrong. And it's 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 really disgusting to say anything like that. Obviously, it's uh, you know, it's a bad thing if she does cause someone to sin, but that's not the reason for Tneas. The modesty is based on herself. For her to be a hundred percent uh in check with her with her true self, which is royalty. Royalty requires requires the not mingle with society so easily. Like Melech doesn't mix. Women are Malchus, by the way. They're royal, and royalty is not supposed to be all over the place. It's not because a Sefer Torah also is not kept, you know, and left in the middle of the middle of the, the shul on the bima. We want more careful with it. We make sure to put it in the aron. So it doesn't mean that women have to stay home and never go to work. It means whatever they do, it should be in such a way where she makes it known, I'm not available for you. There's something more. In other words, there's arrows sticking inward. I am not for you. I am, I belong to someone else or to a husband that I will have. If she's not married yet. The arrows, arrows are sticking in, which makes her feel, makes, by the way, the men who look at her, well, wow. This woman you have to you have to respect. When women have respect for themselves and adapt the royalty, 
men look at them like, wow, she's not for me. <laughs> you know, I'm not on that level. Rather than the other way around where she's, you know, begging for attention, it loses respect. I once was dealing with a chassan who was not very from, and I was wondering why he wants to, uh, only to marry a woman, a girl, who's really modest. And I said, you know, they keep Shabbos barely. I mean, kosher Shabbos, that's about it. You're marginal orthodox at best. Why are you so careful about, I, I'm, I'm surprised you really care about this. Oh, I know why. Because your parents, right? Your parents are really from, you want to satisfy them. No, 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 Rabbi, it's not, that's not the reason. What's the reason? Because I respect someone who respects themselves. I feel that the women who don't dress are begging for attention. They don't feel good about themselves, so they have to beg for attention. And I don't like people like that. I want someone who really feels self-sufficient, sustained, and has a good, good, um, you know, self-esteem, not a low self-esteem, and doesn't have to, you know, show everyone, look at me, look at my body. Well, I have no soul. At least I have a body. So look at that. Look at my fisonies, my, my external. That's not attractive, by the way. <laughs> my sister who's a psychologist, a, a marriage counselor, has a one-liner. She's a woman, she could say it. I, I would never say it, but she says this. Better to be attractive than to be attracting. Because the more you try to be attracting, the less attractive you become. To the opposite gender, by the way. <laughs> Obviously, there are always exceptions to every rule. But in general, even men who are not really from, and even the ones that are less than not from, really respect a woman who dresses modestly. In fact, there was a survey. <laughs> I saw this. I'm getting off on a tangent here. A survey of uh, not really men you would respect. They're the real, uh, you know, you say in Yiddish, grub young, you know, people that are very, very vulgar. And they ask these kind of men, which woman would you rather have? And they showed a picture of a, you know, a woman who was like a harlot, and then another really, a woman who was very, very modestly dressed. 97% of all these figures, all these men answered, they'd rather have, they'd rather be with a woman who is uh, dressed modestly even though they are not very modest themselves. So that's that. I, mean, I just wanted to throw that in. Again, he doesn't mean, and maybe he means, but we don't believe that a woman should stay home and only stay home. Wherever she goes, she shouldn't attract attention. She should be involved in what she's doing, bring home some, bring, you know, bring home, uh, if there's a need for extra parnasa, no problem. But it should also be in a very modest way, in a very, you know, where everyone looks at her and says, wow, it's like a woman has royalty. She's special. This is a woman of stature. Yes. What if you have like a skill or talent that requires you like publicize it, which I'm sure every profession has. Yeah. But, like, you know, to some extent, the, everyone has to like sell themselves. Right. But what if you really have to? to like, can you give me an example of what the type of. Like uh, you're a singer for women. Okay. And you have to like promote it for women, but you don't want to come off as an artist. Because, and you actually really don't want men to like hear at like you don't. Well, men won't hear. It. Just make sure men don't hear. Because you have to like post on social media, and you have to like post on your like you yeah. have to like promote yourself or no. Right, that's the problem we have with today's modern technology, social media. Yeah. Ask your much <laughs> I don't like to ask these questions. I got it to my fault. I got off on the tangent here. Okay, let's see the Gemara inside. It really wasn't the topic of our discussion today, but I threw it in. Um, there is a letter from the Rebbe, by the way. Just one, more, one more thing in. There's a letter from the Rebbe, a powerful, un, uncharacteristic. The Rebbe is always positive. Very seldom you hear negative words from the Rebbe. The letter in 1970, Zion Adar Aleph, it's translated in English, by the way. I have it at home. I can bring it to you if you want. Where the Rebbe says, uh, forget about the halacha aspect of it. Just from a humanistic standpoint, uh, Women are being used as symbols. I don't want to say the word sex symbols. The Rebbe uses those words, those exact words, but he says, uh, and it only causes things to get worse and worse and worse to the extent that it has destroyed families. And the Rebbe uses a very negative, harsh tone there, which is so uncharacteristic of the Rebbe never uses harsh tone. The Rebbe never says anything that's scary and, you know, and negative, almost positive, focus on the positive. But that's the one exception, that letter if you want to see the letter, I have it at home. Uh, it's a powerful letter. And the Rebbe is begging women who are, you know, acquainted with modesty and know the rules and do observe the laws of Tzinyus to have an impact on their acquaintances, on their relatives, on their friends. The Rebbe made a mitzvah. 
not well known. Back in the 70s, there was very often the Rebbe wrote letters about, but there's one letter that really is like, whoo, sharp. Sharp is, is very, very sharp. Uh, it all happened in the late 60s and throughout the 70s. And it was a lot better than it is now situation. Um, so anyone who says that Rebbe never discussed these, these, you know, this issue is making a very, very bad mistake. It's not true. But the Rebbe wanted the women, obviously, not men, women to try to impact other women in a positive way, not by reprimanding them, Pastor Shalom, by, by showing the positivity of Sneers. There was one woman in Crown Heights who was the wife of Rabbi Heller. She passed away at a young age. Beautiful woman. She dressed like a, like a queen, not like a bubba, an alta bubba, which only turns people off. She dressed really beautifully, modestly, but beautifully. When you looked at her, you saw. Elegant. Elegant, good. This is Huh? Your daughter teaches us. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, okay. Very nice. So she was a uh, Tadek as well. Besides being modest, she was also uh, very special. special. She was a, a balas madrega. She was on a special madrega. She wasn't a regular woman. And she would, you know, attract so many girls and so many women to her. She heard them. She used to give. I remember them. She heard them. Wife came from the Shira and she, wow, fascinating. She was also a, a, a charisma. She was entertaining. The shame that she's not here anymore. Uh, she was the wife of Rabbi Heller, the Rav, one of the, one of the three Rabbanim in Crown Heights. Okay. Is the letter that you have in English? Or? It's translated in English. When my son got married, I made sure to have this letter on. I don't know what I do. If I leave it on the table, no one's going to take it. It was taboo the subject. So what I did was I printed it inside the bencher. Okay. See, so if you take a bencher home, then you like you open up, oh, what's this? <laughs> and you read it. Everyone takes a bencher home. Uh, if you want, I can give you one. I have many, many uh, spare ones. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go. Let's continue. The heavenly court. Pairs a woman to a man for marriage only in accordance with his deeds. Shenamar, and we quote a pasuk from Tillim. Kilo Yanuach Shevet, the next page, Shevet or Rosha Al Goyrel Hasadikim. It's a pasuk in Tillim, Bittel 125. That Hashem will not allow the rod of wickedness should rest upon the lot of the righteous, meaning Hashem is not going to pair a righteous man to a non-righteous woman or vice versa. Okay, so now we know that Shidduchim are supposed to be in accordance with their deeds. If you behave yourself, you get a good woman so from the man's side of you, from the perspective of a man. If you behave yourself, you'll get someone who's basically on your level, and if not, you'll get someone also on your level. And the marriage won't work out so well. Okay, then he says further, Omar Rabba Bar Barchana, Omar Rabbi Yochanan. Rabba, the son of Barchana, Bar means the son. The first Bar means the son. The second Bar is part of his name, of his father's name. Rabba Bar, the son of Barchana, of his father's name was Barchana, said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. These are all Amoraim, the first generation or second generation of Amoraim. The Koshel is Avgon Kikriya, Kikriyas Yamsuf. It is difficult for the omnipresent, meaning for Hashem, to match up a man and a woman for marriage as it was as it was to accomplish the splitting of the Red Sea. In other words, it's, it's difficult for to match a marriage, make a marriage work as it was to accomplish the splitting of the Red Sea. As if it was difficult even for God, for Hashem himself, to make the miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea. We'll still see what that means. Shinamar, where do we see this is true? There's a Pasuk <coughs> also in Tillim, later on, Samaches 68, that says the following, Elikim, Moshev Yechidim Baisa, he gathers individuals who are singles in a home and makes them a couple, marry, has, gets them to be married. Mosi Asirim Makosharas. Then it says, he releases prisoners at a suitable moment. This refers to the prisoners of the Jews in Mitzrayim. Asirim means prisoners. Motsi Asirim, he releases prisoners at a suitable moment. 
Suitable moment means, simple pshat means that it was a perfect spring day. When it came out of its rhyme, it was not too hot, not too cold. Kosher. Kosher arose means kosher. Just exactly the, the weather you want. Got to travel. They were walking. So when they, when the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, and leaving Mitzrayim is not just leaving Mitzrayim, because until you've gone through the Red Sea, you haven't left Mitzrayim yet. Without Kriyas Yamsuf, you're still stuck. Because the Egyptians were ambushing, were running after us. When were we really out of Mitzrayim? Only after the miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea, Kriyas Yamsuf. So when it says, God took out the prisoners in a nice weather, a beautiful time, it means the splitting of the Red Sea was done at a beautiful time. Being that it talks about marriage, Hashem takes two individuals who are singles and brings them into a home. And then right after that, it says, God takes the people who are imprisoned out, he releases prisoners. So it's comparing the release, the splitting of the Red Sea, which made us free, to the marriage of two singles. Okay. And that's not easy. Splitting of the Red Sea is very difficult, even for Hashem. Is it going to answer that, like, how is it difficult for no, it's not going to get into this, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's not going to ask, is there anything difficult for God? It's not going to ask that question. Yeah, yeah. We once discussed this, by the way, if you remember, in a class, I don't know if you were there, <laughs> the class I had a while back, why do we say, I'm not only, I'm going to get carried away with this and we're not going to learn anything today, but it's okay. Uh -huh. What else is there? We never learned anything. Why Kriyas Yamsuf? Do you ever hear the word Kriyas Yamsuf? Remember that fear? What should, what should really be the proper tune, proper wording? Bikiyas oh, Yamsuf. Splitting. How do you say splitting in Hebrew? Bikiyah, Bokea. Bokea Yam Lifne Moshe. Behayam Bokata, Bokata, Beis Kof Ayin Tav, Bokata. You split. Hashem tore the water. He tore it, he didn't tear the water. He split the water. Why does it say he tore the water? You don't tear water. So the answer we gave you in that class, do you remember the answer? It was because he, he, the sea split twice. There was a second splitting, you know, have you heard that? There was a second splitting of a sea, tailor-made for two individuals who were not such good individuals. Guess who they are? Dasan and Aviram. They were left in Mitzrayim. They, they refused to leave when the Jews left. They sided with Paro. <laughs> Whatever Moshe would do, they would go against him. If Moshe says A, they say B. He says B, they say A. They were, they, they, they were sadists. They hated Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah. So whatever he led, whatever he led, he led the Jews out, we're staying. And Parah was very happy with it. Parah says, you guys are smart. We're going to go after them. So they went after Parah. They were, they were on the Parah's side. Then they saw the splitting of, they saw the splitting of their sea. But whoa. And they tried themselves. And they split again a second time. Why does it say splitting and not why would it say tearing? Because once the sea split, it became like two separate entities. And we take two separate entities and you cut it open again, that's called tearing. In Halakha of Shabbos, two things that are tied together, that are sewed together, if you un unsew it or remove the stitches, that's called tearing. But if you take a piece of paper, one item, and you tear it, you're not violating the law of tearing on Shabbos, by the way. Might be like a different different problem, but not that. Tearing is only when you take two things that are stuck together and you un, and you detach it or unpaste it, according to the Alter Rebbe, by the way. So it fits in very well. The first time was the body of water was one body. You can't tear water; you split it. The second time around, already it was already split for the Jewish people. When it splits the second time, it's taking two entities of water, two bodies of water that were sewed together again. And we also it. We just also is not a word, is it? Yeah. It's made up work. <laughs> and we detach it. So that's called Kriya. That's it. Now, now I have to tell you that there was a big, big tumultuous complaint against God. How dare you save the lives of these two evil people? So why were they killed during Kushan? Good question. We asked that question in the year. Now do you remember? Why were they saved? Because they one good thing they did. They were hit hard. They were the show trip. And they did not allow, they, they, they allowed themselves to be hit to take the brunt off the Jewish people. They were, somehow they, they liked their fellow Jews. <laughs> they hated Moshe, but they were allowed, but they said, we're going to fight for the cause. We're going we're, to we're take it on our backs. That one schuss, they were Zoha 
to be saved, even though they all the other Jews that stayed behind perished. All the ones that did not didn't want to leave all perished. They were the only two people that did not perish from the ones that did not want to leave Egypt. What was their good deed again? They were children. They were police. Okay. Their job was to make sure the Jews, and they didn't do their job, and they were hit. They were smacked well. They took the brunt, and they told Moshe, you made things worse for us. They're the ones who are complaining to Moshe. Why did you do this? Why did you have to go to Paro and complain to Paro that, that we let my people go? Oh. And now things are much worse. And they were the ones that suffered. Oh, okay. So because they took, they took, they suffered for other Jews, they, they merited something they didn't really deserve. But it wasn't easy because all the Malachim, all did not want to, the, and the split, the state, the state didn't want to split. For these people, it was hard. Hard for God to make it happen. For a shoyim like this, that's one shot. Oh, how, how can you say it's kosher lezav gong the kriyas yam? So there are other, other periods you'll also see in the footnotes. It doesn't have a, 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 an explanation. But the Gemara does not discuss this, by the way. The commentaries discuss this. Anyways, yes, Hannah. Um, the, the splitting of the sea and, and compared to like bringing, bringing people together in marriage, yeah. it's it's compared, like, are you making the connection of the, of the splitting and the tearing? Because it's like first, like in heaven, before we descended into our bodies, we were like one soul, and they had to split us and put us in two bodies, and then they bring us together. I wasn't thinking of that, by the way, like, to be honest. Two. I hear you very nice. I'm in heaven, and now there's a second time down here. Yeah. I wasn't thinking of that, but that, but it's a good idea. What you're saying right now is makes a lot of sense. Put your commentary on the Gemara here. Right. Good, not bad. Yes. Is it true that when the Jews crossed through the sea, they arrived single file onto the other side of the land? They actually went around. Yeah, like single file, like yeah. in a circle. It's true. Mm -hmm. So I heard the most beautiful thing about how it's always compared to Shadokim about how like everyone's like, oh, like when's my Shadok gonna come? La la la. And it's like they waited for the person in front of them to get to the other side. They weren't all miraculously saved at the same time on the other side. They went one by one. So mm. there were people at the end of the line, and there were people in the beginning who right. arrived first. Right. So Very nice. Okay. <laughs> <Beautiful. laughs> Write that down too. Okay. I, I've heard something like that, but it's like the ark. So there's twelve different like lanes. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, oh, this circle is going to finish faster than this. Some people use the lanes. Wow. I've never heard that. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the Gemara is going to question this. I'm not questioning how 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 can you say it's difficult for God? That's not the question. The Gemara has a different question. You're telling me that it's it's according to people's um, level of behavior, level of religiosity, how from they are, or how they observe, you know, how they, their mental kind or whatever, that's what it depends on? That doesn't seem very well. It doesn't seem right. Why? Because any, any means, the Gemara challenges Rish Lakish's dictum that a man and a woman are paired in accordance with their deeds. Any, it's a word that's often used in Gemara. Yeah? In, in, in Aramaic, in. In Hebrew, ain means not, ain. In Aramaic, in means yes. Ini, yeah, yeah, ini. <laughs> Get used to Gemara. Ini, or any? is it really so? You're, are you telling me that, that couples are paired based on their on their level of how from they are or whatever? Muhammad Rav Yehuda, Omar Rav, Rav Yehuda says in the name of Rav, our boy in Yom Kodim Yeshivas Havlat. 40 days before the formation of an embryo. Now, when we say formation of the embryo, we mean 40, the 40th day. When is our embryo completely formed? 40 days of gestation. On the 40th day, that's when it's... The Gemara said you can actually pray for a girl, even if it was meant to be a boy, until the 40th day. There are a lot of rules. Also, the laws of abortion are lighter. I'm not saying you're allowed to, but saying it's a lot lighter if it's within the 40 days than it's after 40 days. There are some heterim under certain extenuating circumstances even not to save the mother's life. There are some heterodim by some that during the first 40 days, you could find a heter. After the 40 days, you can't. So the formation of the embryo means that 40 days before the 40th day, i.e. when the baby is conceived, the moment of conception, before the completion of the formation of the child, which is the 40th day, 40 days before the formation of an embryo, basco, a heavenly voice, which is called a basco, 
The reason why it's called Basco is also discussed. I'll leave that out. A heavenly voice issues forth and proclaims. A heavenly voice meaning a voice that's really speaking in behalf of Hashem. And proclaims. Bas Ploni Liploni. The daughter of so-and-so is destined for so-and-so. Or Bias Ploni Liploni. The particular house is destined for so-and-so. Or Sade Ploni Liploni. This particular field is destined for so-and-so. But what do we see here? The first thing, the first thing that's important for us to know is that a shidduch, a daughter, a girl, for a boy, it's not based on their actions, because Hashem preordains this the moment of conception. The actions are not known. God knows the actions, but he ne he'll never say. If Hashem were to say, uh, you belong with her based on your actions, then that would, that would take away his free choice, his free choice and her free choice. Hashem cannot verbalize and give a ruling. Yes, Hashem knows. The knowledge of Hashem does not dictate our choice. But if God were to say openly, you shall be with her, if it's based on our actions, then God is dictating our actions. We would have no free choice but to be the way we turned out to be. So it has to be that it's not according to one's actions. It's as if it's not known. Hashem makes the shidduch before the person he gets, gets involved in anything. It just conceived. The moment the baby is conceived, there's already a ruling. We're referring to the embryo of the boy, of the male, by the way. The moment the boy is conceived, there's a ruling from on high, you will marry that girl. That girl might not be born yet. It's more often that the boy is older than the girl. So the boy is just conceived, the girl is not here yet. She's boss baloney. She's the daughter of some, the daughter to be of someone. She's not here yet. You can't call her Polonius. She's not here yet. She might be older than him, but she might be, but she's probably younger than him. So she's not around yet. You will get not based on who you are, not based on your level of what kind of person you are. It's based on God's decision beyond reasons that we can understand. You belong to this person. That seems to contradict what we said before. We just got finished saying that it's based on our actions. And here we say it's not based on your actions. It's the creative when you when you're your board. And also, that would also go against Rabbi Yochanan, who said it's so difficult. For God to have, to, it's difficult to bring people together. He already ruled on this in the beginning. It's not difficult. Had it been based on our actions, that would be difficult to find two people that are exactly alike. That's hard. But if it's not based on that, it's not hard. So it's a question on both things we said. How can you say it's according to our actions, number one, and how can you say it's so difficult? When Hashem gives a ruling, just like that. Boom, you, here, next, you. <laughs> and he's doing that, says... The mother asks, what is Hashem doing right now after he created the world? Making Shaduchim. It's making Shaduchim. But aren't there like angels like calling out different names and stuff like that? And I, don't I, we have I haven't heard of angels. Wait, so we don't, don't we have like, we have like our, 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 the other half of our soul, like, like our, our truest soulmate, and then we have potentials, like you said. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, so we we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna discuss this. This is just, yeah, 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 we'll get there. I, I understand what you're asking. We're gonna get, to, not today, I guess, <laughs> but eventually we're gonna get to, is it as simple as that? That the shidduch that's decreed upon you, are you for sure gonna marry that shidduch? Could, could that, do you lose it? Is that possible to lose? Could someone else who's more meritorious win that girl over, win that boy over? It's not so, it seems like it's like, Cut and dry, it's it. And you'll see the commentaries on the bottom of the page we'll discuss this at length. But let's first get into the answer and then we'll have to leave because it's a little late. Lokasha. Gemara says, your question is not a question. It depends what kind of marriage you're talking about. This notion that matches are determined at conception was stated concerning a first marriage. And the union that is most difficult that Hashem pair is only based on the worthiness of each one for the other, that's when there's a second marriage. Now, does Zuk Shani mean a second marriage? That's, that itself is very unclear. Does it mean a second marriage? Or perhaps does it mean a couple who gets married late, even for the first time? They're no, they're no longer childbearing. They're getting married. They both never had children and getting married for the first time at the age of 70. Some say that's what Zubchani means. That's what a second mar marriage means. And that's second. It means something that is basically un un uncommon right? uh, versus the what more common type of marriage is, which is called first. First, 
First things first, what you see most often is called first. Or perhaps there's a third way of explaining what a second marriage is. And you'll see on the bottom all the different opinions. There's also a fourth opinion. So let's just accept the, the simple object shot, that it means a second marriage. A second marriage doesn't go so easy because it depends on my sim, on who they are. It's not decreed on high at the moment of conception. This can change. Where did you see that? I learned that. Okay, so that's not in Gemara. I want to first go through the Gemara, then we'll get into the Rebbe's letters. I have a lot of other things to talk about. There are letters from the Rebbe about this, and there's, you got to first get to the basics. So I'm learning now basic, just the basic information from the Gemara about Shidukim. There's a lot of things that will twist and turns, and it's not going to sound the same as, as it is right now when we begin the Sugya. The Sugya means this discussion. It's a very complicated Sugya. It's not easy. There are a lot of, a lot of variables. But here the Gemara answers, Habazuk Rishain, Habazuk Shaini, that's it. Depends if it's a first marriage or a second marriage. What happens if it's a first marriage for him and a second marriage for her, or vice versa? So they say, in order for it to be a second marriage, it means for both of them. If it's both Chasen and the Kala, that's called a second marriage. Just like when it comes to Sheva Brothers, you have Sheva Brothers if either one of them is married for the first time. You don't have Sheva Brothers only if both of them are married for the second time. Whether it was a divorce or, or a, uh, a widow, a widower, second marriage is always, if they're both, both of them were, not, were married before, then it's a, um, let's say she was married to a non Jew before. <laughs> wasn't a real wedding, obviously. Not a, it wasn't a halakhic wedding. They were so called married, similarly married prior to their um, real marriage. So that's, Enough, according to most poets, to consider it as she was married before, even though luckily she wasn't really married. So even if she was living with a non-Jew, officially living with her early in him in a, as a civil marriage, it takes away her ability to have Sheva Brachos. So if he was second marriage and she was married before to a non-Jew, or vice versa, he was married to a non-Jew, it's considered a second marriage, even though luckily she wasn't really married. Yes? But it's only if for both of them, it's a second marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So we ran out of time, as usual, because it's my fault. I, I uh, digress a little bit. I want to continue the subject. There's a lot to talk about over here. I mean a lot. And this is just the surface. You got to go in order. Surface, then you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Thank you for bringing us up. Thank you. Thank you. Asked for it, so. Appreciate it. you asked for it, right? Yeah. Lila, by the way, yeah. is not here. And guess what? The name of the mala of the but that announces she took him. Her name is Lila. It's a woman. It's a really? female. Yeah. Her name is Lila. Uh, <laughs> no way. Uh, so Tell her that. You said for a second marriage, it's both people married their character and deeds, but on the first marriage, they're not married. Right. And if you look at the, do you have the, you have the, you have the right? You have a yeah, copy? I can't do this. No, no, the English. Oh, okay. Look at the English commentary to see. Okay. Bye. What's your first name? Alexander, right? Yeah. The class is literally the whole class. I'm so mad. Really, I wish you could Yeah. Is that going to be next week? I will. Hi. 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 All the Nishamas that oh, like every year, and all the people have to date for you. Know, I've never seen anyone do that. Is it true? By email? And, <laughs> I never heard that, but. And, it's not based on anything, it's just to make people feel better. Um, not Probably. Problems, but that might be a reference to your brain, but we've got letters and boxes. Yes. Yeah. No problem. Uh, I appreciate that. Sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. To like call back and questions about that.
Hi, this is Samantha Rubin, a town alcoholic, and I just missed you. Um, I'm calling to confirm that all of my paperwork has been submitted by email and um, to make that you know, January 1st deadline. And I had a question about Malka um, Bakinson. So she's my client, and I remember that there was going to be her, her services needed to be replenished or her hours needed to be um, reapplied. And if that was going to happen, I remember that I was supposed to get a phone call or check back in with you guys to see on your end if she was approved for um, more services. So please give me a call back at 2817-925-924 and um, I look forward to your call. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. 
Seriously, try not to like you know feel bad about it because everybody wants you there, everybody likes you, and I miss you, I'm sure they miss you too. So thank you for your last fun. I know, I know. 